This movie is so freaking weird. Like, it's so weird. Also, I just very quickly want to recommend this. This is the Agave Lip Mask from, I believe this is Bite Beauty. And it's the one that comes in the stick form. My lips have been the most chapped these past few days, guys. Literally, ridiculously dry to the point that they're cracking. I have a crack right here and I have a crack right over here. It's painful. I cry about it sometimes. But we're getting past it because I did find this guy. Anyways, back to the story at hand. This is a big deal. So, there's this movie that I had been dying to watch. It's called I'm Thinking about ending things like i was saying i watched it with my husband who is my husband just not by marriage you get it first impression we watched the trailer what the flip and then we were both pretty age about it we were super intrigued nipples hard af the movie opens up to this young girl with gorgeous curly hair and she's got this dope outfit on the movie's color corrected like a perfect little skittles bag and it just works it's already narrated by the girl who is getting stared at by this older guy in the window keep him in mind throughout this whole story because he is very much in the whole story pretty sure he's like the main character but we'll get into all those conspiracies later homeboy picks her up i forgot what homeboy's name is i think it's jonathan no it's jake not from state farm the one from the movie jake picks up the girlfriend while the girlfriend is already in her mind and speaking and saying things and she's like I'm thinking about ending things and you don't know what she's talking about because it doesn't specify it could very much be her life it could very much be the relationship it could very much be her red hair phase we don't know by the way she's gonna go meet Jake's parents it's a big step in their relationship and the whole time she's like should we take this step it's not really going anywhere and then she tells Jake she doesn't want snacks which is weird because you should always want snacks on a road trip like who doesn't want snacks on a road trip that's when i knew this bitch was eerie okay the snow was nice and calm at first and they're driving through a lot of farmland i think this movie takes place in the south or like connecticut i don't know it's one of the two and she is deep in thought in her monologues and like saying weird things and he keeps cutting her off and you really think he like can hear her thoughts because the way that he cuts off all of her little monologues it's like literally in between a word and he just stares at her like homeboy can't take a picture, like he doesn't know what that is. He just stares at her. And she has to cut off her monologues, which are pretty good. Like the way this movie is written is chef suecito. Like it's great. How cute is that? Anyways, during this drive, I'm pretty sure, it flashes back to the old man who's no longer being a creepy creeper creepster and staring at her through the window. It's like a flashback to this old guy now in the house. It's a really pretty big farmhouse and he is watching cartoons and he's probably eating cereal because that sounds super good right now. And he is just like enjoying his morning little routine. And then he steps outside. This is the foundation we're using, by the way. We're actually using both of these. I don't wanna be a big fat liar. It's the of them. And in the front of his house, you see like a perfectly nice swing set. That's just, it's a swinging or it might be stagnant. I don't remember. This isn't an accurate movie review. It's not even a movie review. It's a story time. It's what we do here. Welcome to my channel. Anywho, anyway, anyhow, it flashes back to the car ride and he's talking to homegirl, which we later learned that her name, for the most part, is Lucy. Notice that I said for the most part, because because this time, this one didn't forget the names. It's really about to be a trip. He's telling her about like this poem that he once heard or like that he's like reminded of a poet that like killed himself or like shot himself on the foot or like both things and that's how it happened. It's a tragic story. And then we find out that she is a poet of some sorts and he asks her, hey, do you want to practice some of your poem? Like, you know how like when your boyfriend asks you like, what have you been up to? That's basically what he's doing. And then she's like, no, no, Jake from not state farm I don't want to perform and then she rips out this fat poem that honestly at some point I thought it was a book because she just keeps going it's like a really long poem and the poem describes like a man who is just sad and lonely and coming home to a house hating his wife or some Amityville horror ish like that like it's a really depressing poem it's definitely not twinkle twinkle little star it could be twinkle twinkle little star if you were a dying old man who hates his life 
I don't know, they're just talking about it. She says this poem and eventually, like 45 minutes later, act three, the poem's over. Like the B was huge, okay? It makes the Da Vinci Code look like a haiku. And he's like, wow, I totally loved it. You know, like a liar? Which kind of gives you another clue. The chemistry they got is off. Like, yeah, she did mention that they have good chemistry and like she's happy and what have you not, but they're not a match made in heaven, you know? They're not Maria Gloria and Brandon Ferris. And that becomes not only like apparent, but also something else starts becoming very apparent and that's that one of them isn't real. One of them is a figment of the other's imagination, or at least that's the vibe I got. Then they drive past, cause remember I said they're driving past the old country. They drive past this super abandoned house that is really, really falling apart and it's gray, old, and it's very shabby, but not the chic kind. And lo and behold, there is is a perfectly good, very cute swing set out in the front yard. So this also kind of leads you to believe this isn't somebody's imagination. Somebody's in somebody's head, living there completely rent free. They finally get to Jake's parents' house. Literally that drive took forever, probably because of the haiku. He probably got lost because he fell asleep. They finally get there and the mom is like super eager to see them, like waving her hand off. Like you think it's gonna fall off of her at some point. And also on the drive, he points out that the weather is getting pretty bad. Like the snow starts getting a little bit more aggressive then that there's probably gonna be a blizzard later. And she goes, hey, if there's a chance that we're not gonna make it back tonight, take me home. I don't want any part of this. And he's like, no, 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 I got snow chains, we're good. So she's like, okay. And then Jake gets out of the car and tells Lucille, hey, I'm not ready to go inside just yet. I kind of want to give you the tour of the farm. And she's like, nah, it's fine, it's freezing. We're literally in a blizzard. And he's like, no, 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 no or something like that. And he's like, let me give you the tour of my farm and like where I grew up. She kind of gives in and is like, yeah. Sure. And she looks at the sheep and contemplates death again as one does and they see like an empty peg pen. And homegirl obviously asks, yo, where are the pigs? And he's like, well, that's kind of a sad story. I don't know if I want to tell you. And Lucy being that one is like, no, 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 sir. You can't just say stuff like that and then not tell me what happened to the damn pigs. Just tell me what happened to the pigs. Did they become bacon? Did they jump over the moon? Did one go to the market? Did one cry wee wee all the way home? Did one blow the house down? Tell me what happened to the pigs. And he's like, well, they all kind of started to gather to one area of the pen and my dad hadn't checked on him in a while, which is a horrible farmer, by the way, you gotta check on your pigs. And once my dad did check on them, he noticed that they were all kind of huddled together and they weren't moving. And when my dad had to eventually like flip them over, he found maggots on their underside, literally eating away at them. So he had to put them down. Oh, whoa, says, I, who's just a simple bystander and somebody who doesn't eat pork. She's like, wow, Jake, I'm super turned on by this story. Please take me in to go meet your parents. It's not really what happens, but again, I think you get it. He takes her inside and offers her some slippers and tells her that, you know, my parents will be down shortly. You wanna listen to some music. They get distracted by the basement door and he's just like, you don't gotta go in there. There's no need to go in there. Basements are creepy. And she's like, why? And he's like, I don't know, because in movies, you know, like basements are inherently creepy. Or Ashley, homegirl said that. But again, you're starting to get this feeling that she's not real. Like she's just a figment of his imagination. And anything that she says, technically he's saying. But you kind of find out that that homeboy, his whole idea of life is kind of warped into movies and not real life. More so like what the media wants us to think life is and what life love is and I know I'm getting like real Christopher Nolan on you but it really makes you think she notices that there is scratches on the basement door and she's like what is this and he's like oh the dog probably did that to which point she responds like any of us would where's the dog please bring the puppy out I already love the pooch more than I'll ever love you so the dog comes out and the dog's like cool beans at first because then he shakes because he's wet supposedly coming from outside and he does that and then then he doesn't stop doing that, which again is so freaking weird. And then all of a sudden the parents arrive and then you're like, 
what? Your mom is the one and only Tony Collette? But she's not really Tony Collette. She's like Colleen or some mom name like that. And she's interesting. The parents themselves are interesting. But Lucy actually points out that, hey, kind of like this house. It reminds me of the house I grew up in, which I think in like the beginning of the movie, she points out how she grew up in an apartment. But again, it's not really Lucy, yo. Lucy ain't real. Lucy's a ghost or some paranormal crap like that because it's Jake. Again, not from State Farm. Keep up. Anyways, they go have dinner. Mind you, the reason that Jake was asking her if she wanted to stop and get snacks was because he was like, hey, my mom's been sick. I don't want you to expect a spread. No, 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 no. That is literally the opposite that happens. I thought we were watching any family dinner scene from any holiday movie. It was a whole spread. And in the center of the table was very clearly a ham. And then the mom points out, I just wanna shamelessly plug something here. All this food is from our farm. Maggot filled ham, anybody? Again, this is why I don't eat pork. And you get the feeling that Jake, while he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go visit my parents. Yeah, I wanna go see what they're up to. Yeah, I wanna introduce my girlfriend, who by the way, they have just been dating for a very short period of time. It does get revealed that they've only been dating for six weeks, which I mean, do you? The conversation gets brought up of like, hey, we heard you're an artist and she's like, yeah, but like, and then the dad is like, I really hope you're not one of them abstract artists who gets them anyway. You know like sounding like a total Republican. And she's like, no, but you notice that Jake, every time his mom like tries to touch him or like tries to bring up stuff from his past and like be worn towards him, he's like, no, get away from me, don't touch me. Like just very awkward. And you can see that there's like some deep rooted stuff going on there and you don't really want to get too into it. We're gonna go into the naked palette because I really want to. And I haven't played with this palette in such a long time and it really is such a pretty palette. The inevitable question of like how they met gets brought up. And this is one moment you're really gonna wanna pay attention to because he kinda gives her permission to like tell the story. Go ahead, babe, it's all on you. Spoils alert, they meet at a trivia night and she was just there to accompany a friend. She really didn't care if they won or lost, like she was out there to have a good time. But she could tell that homeboy was like looking her up and down and thinking like, hey mom, like you're really cute and all that. And you could tell that Jake is just getting so frustrated with his parents, leading you more so to believe that this very much is his story. And even though it looks like it's getting told by Lucy's point of view, it very much isn't. And then I think the dinner table scene is where Lucy first gets her name changed. Jake calls her something else which isn't Lucy, it's like Louise or something. It's a very slight change, but you catch the change and you're like, why? Also, I have to point out that when you first meet the parents, they look like a typical parent's age. I'm gonna say 40s to maybe 50s. They don't look that old. And eventually, once the dinner scene kind of stops, which it stops in a super abrupt way, Lucy's talking and laughing and you can tell that she's really trying to get along with the parents and really have a conversation with them and then she laughs and chuckles and dessert gets brought up which then she finally says something we can all agree with and she says yes i would love dessert because i never turned down anything chocolate and then she's at the kitchen table alone it like shifts from like a full dinner table to a completely empty dinner table you don't just leave your guests alone at least not in an eerie creepy stephen king way that's not being a nice host come on karen do better and then it just kind of switches and she She's wearing a pearl necklace. So they kind of age her. And I don't know what it is about pearl necklaces, but they really do tack on at least 10 years to your actual age. And her hair's kind of pinned back because in the beginning it was very messy and very red. And then she looks at a picture of a little girl or a little boy. But she asks Jake, who's also staring at the picture, which is by the way, very clearly her. And she's like, who is this? And he's like, can't you tell? It's me. Flashback to the picture and it's very clearly him. But in the beginning it was very clearly her, which again, it's very weird. It throws you off so much. And then eventually the parents come in and then Lucy gets a phone call from a friend. And by the way, this is also something to note. During dinner, you see that she has like a million missed calls from Lucy. During the drive to the parents' house, she gets a call that she ignores and it's from Lucy, which is her name. Again, for most of the movie, but she does eventually 
eventually answer this call and it's like from Ramona or Rhoda or Beezus, I don't know, something like that. She answers the phone and without even blinking, she hears what I assume was the old man. The old man that we keep jumping back and forth to who we find out is the janitor of a high school and just watches other little kids dancing. Not really in a weird way, but kind of like in a what did I do with my youth? Why did I waste my life type of way? Old guy janitor, we'll call him Bill, which I don't think it's Bill, yo. I think it's Flippin' Jake from the future. Not from State Farm, from the future. Not Phil either. Although that was a good show. Ricky Ullman, he could get it. By the way, at some point we do also cut back to the janitor who is now like having his lunch break in one of the classrooms and he's watching a movie that is about a girl who like doesn't love a guy but like does love a guy and like the girl is a waitress. Gonna wanna pay attention to that as well. The girl is a waitress which again I think we're starting to get into the idea that the janitor is Jake and this more feeds your whole theory of Jake doesn't live in reality Jake lives in movies his whole world is distorted by then this is why he isn't a functional adult is because he just lives in fairy tales and then you flash back to what's going on not really in present time back at the farmhouse with the whole fam bam they ditch what's her name Lucille Louise Laura they ditch her her again in the sitting room or something I honestly like I don't remember ends up looking for Jake and she's back in her sweater no pearl necklace hair is kind of youth again so she calls for Jake and is like Jake where are you and he goes I'm up here so she kind of goes up following his voice but his voice trails off and she goes into Jake's childhood bedroom and this is where it gets more flippin weird because she goes into his room and it's very much a boy's bedroom and she sees a book of poems that's just open and it's the poem that she recited in the car word for word it is the book of essays that she recited in the car and then she looks over at this extensive movie collection and I'm not gonna lie yo while the movies are you know they're critically acclaimed films. They're not the most positive movies or happy movies or movies that should be in an eight year old kid's bedroom. And then you see an urn and who is in the urn? Jimmy, the dog with the shakes. And then hold up, dad walks in, but it's not dad. Dad has aged. Remember that I told you when they first got to the house, the parents were 40, maybe 50. The dad walks in damn near looking like a corpse white hair super old could barely stand up straight and informs her that he has some sort of disease that causes him to forget and she's like oh dementia and he's like probably and that it's getting quite late which it is the storm is getting quite bad which it is and that they are more than welcome to just stay the night in jake's old bedroom and then he goes to tell her that we're not old-fashioned about that type of stuff you guys can sleep in the same bed although the bed which is in a child's bedroom is not the appropriate size for effing but he didn't say effing he said the other thing with a really strong accent and it does make you kind of uncomfortable because on one side of the cone you want to be like thanks pop thanks for being a homie pound it but on the other side you're like yo i just met you i don't really want to hear you comment on me and my boyfriend's sex life okay like maybe just don't do that okay before she goes down the stairs a million times i'm so bad at this she walks into the other room like across from jake's childhood bedroom she sees jake feeding mom but mom is older and by old i mean literally one foot in the grave old and again you could tell that they were aging them by the time they got into the sitting room the mom looked older than she did in the dining room this film just it really it really confuzzles you and it leaves you frazzled but she does compliment Jake on the way that he is caring for his mom and that he is a good son and she's like yeah thank you for saying that that really means a lot which again you're just kind of like yo you're just stroking your own ego though because Lucy is just a part of your mind she's a figment of your imagination it's like talking in the first person and just complimenting yourself could you imagine if that's all I did? Gloria, like why are you so perfect? 
like stop i mean i do do that don't get me wrong but like it's still weird when he does it anyways he tells her i'm almost done please just let me get this done let me feed my mom let me get myself situated and i'll take you home she goes downstairs this time she makes it in one fell swoop she is stopped by jake who is helping dad now go upstairs to go to the bathroom and you're just like whoa 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 i can understand that time is a construct just like your old average joke but this is off. His dad is carrying a nightgown that does have baby food or baby throw up or some gunk on it that honestly it's just gross because when he left her up in the bedroom he was like let me go find you something to sleep in because it's getting bad out there and you guys can you know stay the night and do the f word thing in the accent and she's like no again I really have to go and then as if that couldn't be even more bizarre Jake then helps out and aids in the argument and is like yeah Amy has to go home. She has her shift in the morning. Remember I told you she's a waitress. And here's the thing yo, when the f did it ever get cleared up that she was a waitress? And why did you call her Amy? And you guys remember who else was a waitress? Homegirl in the movie that old janitor Jake was watching. More than ever now pushing together the theories that the janitor is Jake just in the future and that he kind of lives in movie world, which sounds like a fun place in theory, but not in this movie. Jake is like, let me go take my dad to the bathroom and then we'll go home. And then, the mom pops up, super young looking. Tony Colette is looking fine, 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 but also like very vintagey fine. And she grabs the nightgown and is like, hey, can you throw this in the wash for me? This is Jake's spit up. So Jake is a baby at that point, but Jake is nowhere to be seen. But mom is young and the spit up is Jake's and the nightgown ain't even that cute. And then she has to go to the basement because that's where they keep the washer and dryer. This just keeps getting weirder. I no. So she goes down to the basement and in the basement she lays eyes on a bunch of paintings and she's like yo these look familiar oh yeah they're my paintings because i'm pretty sure i forgot this detail because i'm pretty bad at doing this stuff but when she talks about being an artist at the dinner table she does tell them hey i can show you some of my work i have some then by all means they're like yeah for sure please show us your artwork and she does and she's just kind of like in awe now because her actual physical paintings are in the basement and and then she is kind of like, cool but they say somebody else's name on them that's super sus but again she doesn't do anything about it she just picks up her phone because again it's ringing and it just so happens to be right there and she answers and again it's the old guy saying some weird odd bullsh and then she's like i gotta put this in the washer i'm done being in this basement it's creepy and it's probably cold and humid down here and gross so she goes but there's already a load in the washer and it's a shaking 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 just like the dog but the washer she pulls out the janitor uniform, like a bunch of them, further kind of feeding into our theory of like what's actually happening and that that's actually Jake. When I'm pretty sure, like we can already say this guys, like it's Jake. Nothing really creepy happens in the basement. I mean, unless you guys want to call stolen art creepy, which by all means I get it. I don't support that either. And then they have this conversation, which is kind of like a fight, which you kind of get used to. They have these conversations, which are really subtly fights. As a viewer, it makes you kind of uncomfortable because it's like you're literally sitting in the backseat of a couple fighting and you're like oh what is this what when did this nail get here and then they stop at a like ice cream parlor which is creepy enough in a sense because the mascot for this place is literally a clown so gross and it is a place that you do see in the beginning so it is foreshadowed in the beginning he's like hey can you come down with me and can you order i can't be seen here again super sus if my boyfriend were to be like hey i can't be around these girls I would think something was going on, but the way homeboy is set up is just very creepy. And so she gets out of the car and she orders. But before that, two really pretty blonde bitches come out, okay? And they're like really cute. One is from Nurse Ratchet, which that's a good show. You guys should definitely go watch that as well. And they kind of just look at him and like laugh at him. And then she goes up and orders and they just kind of giggle and laugh like little schoolgirls, which is what they are. And 
in fact, in the janitor kind of scenes, there's a scene where he watches an Oklahoma play rehearsal and one of the girls is in that play. So worlds are colliding. And again, you are just baffled by the entire experience. And finally, this other girl who's a brunette and she's super cute. She does have a rash on her hand, but you know, we all get rashed up sometimes. We've all fallen off of a bike. She goes up and says, I'm sorry about the smell. We're varnishing, which I don't even know what varnishing is. I guess it involves cabinets. She hands her her little burrs, flips them upside down. They stick in the cup. That's how you know they're good. And they start walking away back towards the car. And then the brunette girl goes, hey, you don't have to go. I lied about the smell. And then she just starts outing some real creepy news, right? And Francis over here is like, yo, what's going on? Like, you can tell me. And she's like, no, you. I'm just saying like, you don't have to go. And Fabiola's like, what are you talking about? And the little girl is like, forward. Like, you don't have to go forward with this. And then they get back on the road and they're eating their little McFlurries and all is well until Jake sets his down and then Lacey is like, you barely even touched yours. And she's still kind of picking at hers, but she really wants nothing to do with the milkshake anyway. And they kind of both set them down and they're kind of like, well, this was kind of a waste of the trip. They get into more little passive aggressive comments. This movie is heavy on the dialogue. It's two hours and three hours of this movie is just pure monologue. It's pretty dense. And I can't even tell you if it's worth it really. And then, He's like, well, we have to get rid of this. I don't want the inside of my car to get sticky. Leslie trying to be, you know, the savior of the whole situation. She's like, hey, do you have like a plastic bag or do you have something that I can dump all this stuff in so your car doesn't get sticky because I totally get it. And he's like, no dog, I don't. But I do know a place up the road that probably has a trash can. We could just dump them there. Actually, it's not up this road. We do have to turn down another road. And she's like, no, 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 no. It's already getting nasty out here. I need to get home. I have so much to do tomorrow and I don't want to get a late start. And he's like, no, 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 it's not going to take us a long time. Don't worry about it. There's trash cans there. We'll, we'll just throw these swirly whirlies out and then we'll just hop back into the car and there won't be any consequences there. She doesn't really agree, but he's the one in the driver's seat. So he just makes the ultimate decision to do what he wants anyway, like a man. They finally get to the high school. They pull up right in front of a truck, which looks exactly like Jake's. From the future, janitor Jake truck and he gets out dumps things he kind of walks off to where she can no longer see him gonna go put this on by the way this is the rare brave liquid lipstick been dying to use this so i'll be right back also by the way mind you when they were on their way she he got so frustrated with the ice cream melting and the stuff getting so sticky that he literally like slammed on the steering wheel and called her Ames. Again, another name, which kind of leads you to believe like, yo, Lucy isn't just one girl. It's probably a mixture of so many girls from his past that he's now like recalling. This girl could literally say, hey, me estas confundiendo con otra? Like she could literally say that and it would be okay. Why you gotta make things awkward, Jake? Just put your khakis on and shut up. And and by that, I mean like she could literally be like, hey, no, you're mixing me up with your old bitch. Like she could literally say that because he literally is. Anyways, he comes back into the car, then takes the car keys out and is like, it's rather peaceful here. I just kind of want to sit. And she's like, nah, dog, I got to go home. I've been telling you, I've been giving you like 40 reasons why I need to get home. And then he starts singing that old rapey ballad. You know, the baby it's cold outside one. I don't want to go into a feminist rant, although that's kind of my thing. She doesn't go into that. Eventually, like they kiss it out, which is finally like the first romantic interaction that you see. I guess there is some sort of chemistry amongst these two. The janitor guy gets brought into the picture somehow. And he's like, hey, did you see that? Some old guy was staring at us and that's not okay. And I'm gonna give a piece of my mind. That, and this is when Jake's testosterone gets all revved up and he literally leaves her in the car by herself to go chase down this janitor dude that he so wants to give him a piece of his mind. And he goes into the school eventually she gets tired of sitting in the car and then she goes into the school looking for Jake finding the janitor hugging it out with the janitor having a moment with the janitor and then there's ballet dancing with another little couple and slamming into lockers Jake goes into an auditorium where he accepts surprise and then he thanks the crowd which Lucy is in the crowd but the crowd is full of old people and also he's rather old and then 
he sings a song from Oklahoma, I'm assuming. I've never seen the musical. I'm more of a cabaret girl. And then the movie just kind of ends. And that's it. And that's the movie. You think there's going to be a nice little bow tie on it and you never get the bow tie. You never you never even get a ribbon. It's ju It just kind of ends. And it's so bamboozling. And you're just kind of left sitting there like, what did I just do for two hours of my life? At least that's what I did. It's a weird movie. I, I don't see why you would watch it. I pretty much already explained it to you, but I also can see why you would want to watch it because I pretty much explained it to you. I did a horrible job at that. But my makeup turned out really good.